A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Welcome back to Ramadan Reflections For this, the 16th day of the Blessed Month of Ramadan And today we want to look at the topic of respecting your position of authority And the thought for today will come to us from chapter number 28 Surah Al-Qasas, verse number 23 Now before we go into the theme and the history behind the revelation of the verse And our understanding of it in our own contemporary era let us mention the fact that when it comes to respecting your level of authority or your position or status in society, that many times people will use their name, their family lineage, uh, some you know, incidental characteristic about them to brag and boast to others. Sometimes people will say and will boast upon the fact that their father is so-and-so, the CEO of, of whatever company, their father is a self-made multi-billionaire, for example, and their children will basically ride on the prestige of the father, of the family, or of the mother, and will, you know, demand or expect people that they that they should be respected and honored because of the fact that they have this relationship. What we will see in the verse of today, however, is that the opposite is quite true, and this has been reflective in the chapters of the Qur'an, in the verses of the Qur'an, and in the legacy of the prophets of God and their family members that came after them that never do the true men or women of God use their family lineage or status to claim something which is not rightfully theirs. Before we go into a further discussion and elaboration, let us look and listen to this verse for today and we'll then we'll come back with a brief analysis. Allah says the following in chapter number 28, Surah Al-Qasas. And besides them, he found two women who were keeping back their flocks. Now the history of revelation of this verse and that which came before it is actually about an uh, event that happened at the time of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. And just to give you a very brief summary so we can better understand the context and the, the importance of this verse in the historical light, is the fact that Prophet Shu'aib, who was a very who was an elderly at this point in time in his life, he had sent his two daughters out to uh, take their flock of sheep to a watering hole for them to be able to drink water. And when the two young ladies got there, they saw that there were many, many men who were already who had already gotten there already arrived and they were t tending to their sheep and so because of the fact that these two young ladies the daughter of a, daughters of a prophet who obviously had that modesty and bashfulness and self-respect did not want to get all mingled up with the men uh, and you know bump shoulders with them and, and, and you know God forbid anything would obviously happen or those men would be disrespectful to the women they kept their distance they kept their distance and waited for the men to leave. Prophet Moses, who up until this point was not yet a prophet, he saw these two ladies and he went to them. And he asked them that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing the verse, he says, what's wrong? What's up? What's the situation? You know, why aren't you also going to give your animals an opportunity to drink the water? Why are you waiting back? And they addressed him saying that, you know, that we're waiting and there's a rationale behind this. They've come, they said that, you know, their father is an old man and they're going to wait for these men to basically disperse and then they will take their animals to drink the water. Now the interesting point about this, which is the lesson that we wish to, wish to derive, is the fact that these two young ladies, when the Quran speaks about them, and obviously, you know, when you read the Quran, you see that sometimes Allah will quote people directly within the Quran. And sometimes Allah will use His wording to discuss and describe a scenario. Here in this case, Allah says that there were two women present. He didn't say that there were two daughters of a prophet of God. He didn't say there were two respectable young ladies who had, you know, um, all this modesty and bashfulness and composure about them, who were daughters of a representative of God's, one of God's emissaries who came to this watering well. God spoke to them in very general terms of two women. This shows us at one level, as the commentators have mentioned, that these women did not use their status. They could have told Prophet Moses that we are the daughters of a prophet. Our, God, our father is a great man, a representative of God, you know, God's authority on earth. No, they were very humble about it. They didn't even talk about who they were. 
meaning that they didn't boast of their lineage, of their family, of their, uh, you know, their tribe and their relationship. They were very humble when they came to speak to Prophet Moses at this particular watering hole. For you and I, what does this mean? Well, it means literally that when a person is in a position of authority, that they should never re think for even a moment that their supposed authority, there's, you know, there's this power that they have been given, the societal status that has been given to them, um, should be any reason for them to brag or to boast, right? Just because you're the president, just because you're the CEO, just because you're somebody of you who you think is important, it doesn't mean that you should use your power and authority in negative ways. You know, today around the world we have this Me Too movement, this hashtag Me Too, in which women who have unfortunately been uh, mistreated, mis disrespected, who have had, um, you know, um, advances put upon them by men for those women to advance their career, to move up in the corporate ladder, uh, you see that men have used their status, their power, their wealth, their authority, whether it be Hollywood producers, whether it be politicians, whether it be, you know, sports personalities, whatever the case may be, they've used and misused and abused their powers, that this is something that the Quran has clear, clearly denounced, Islam has clearly denounced many different, uh, in many different verse, verses of the Quran in many different ways. And it's something that obviously has to be condemned and can never be tolerated, whether it be in the world, the secular system, or even within a religious congregation, a religious community. But the point here being is that we have to respect our levels of authority. We should never go out of the bounds of what we are, you know, what we have been entrusted with. And at the same time, we also should realize that if we have family members, just because I'm the president of a company or the president of a mosque, or the president of an Islamic institute, it doesn't mean my children automatically receive the same level or status. You know, unfortunately, sometimes nepotism plays in our communities, in our faith-based communities. And daddy is the president, and so guess what? His son can do whatever he wants. His daughter can do whatever he wants. His son-in-law, his daughter-in-law, they can do whatever they want. His wife can come in and do whatever she wants. Because at the end of the day, it's their father, their husband, it's their relative who is in charge of the organization. No, it doesn't work like that in Islam. It might work that way back home in some, uh, you know, tribal-based feudal society, but not in Islamic teachings. You don't have status just because your dad has status. Just because your mom is somebody in the community, that doesn't make you a, a somebody. It's based on your own merit. And so we have to, and we conclude with this, is we have to respect our level of authority we can never and we should never step out of the bounds of what we are, um, what we're allowed to do, right? Those demarcations are clear and we should never exceed those limits. We should never go to extremes in terms of our power and authority to become megalomaniacs, to, you know, have that power corrupt us. As they say in English, and we conclude with this last statement, that power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so we have to be humble down to earth and respect God who has given us that authority and respect all of those around us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.